Hi everybody, I'm Val Shermer and I'm the founder of Three Totes Farm, which is located just outside of Lexington, Kentucky, and we are in zone 6B. We've been specially cut flower growers since 1997, and we started out growing oriental lilies for the Lexington Farmer's Market. And as many of you probably know, oriental lilies are bulbs. And the bigger the bulb, the bigger the show. I love forcing bulbs and I especially love doing them for the holidays and then also for spring. I have an online course with Lisa that's called Forcing Glorious Blooms for the Holidays and Beyond and um, it's three and a half hours of video of me showing, talking you through everything that I do with a lot of resource stuff um, with as part of the course too. So, but today we have about 30 minutes for me to try to answer any questions that you throw at me about forcing bulbs and the kind of forcing I do is for tabletop bulb gardens. Um, I'll ask you to please put your questions down at the bottom in that um, little circle with the question mark. That will be the only way that I'll actually see them and, um, and we'll just head from there. I'm so glad to see so many of you signing up. Okay, so if you have any questions, just let me know. Now, my class is about forcing amaryllis and paper white. So these are some amaryllis that are came back this year that were from last year. And I like to show people how to save them to rebloom year after year. And they also make tremendous cut flowers. So these are some we just happen to have in the house so i like surrounding myself with flowers okay let's see do we have oh we have a question okay my favorite variety um that is really kind of tough because if you're talking about amaryllis and um my favorite variety is going to be big doubles now this one that i have right here this is one called white amadeus now, you know, I gotta love that because look at the size of this bloom. Um, anything that I grow, I'm gonna get the biggest bulbs possible. And that's gonna be size 36 through 38 centimeters. The bigger the bulb, the bigger the show. So that is one of my very favorite varieties. Um, but I gotta say, every one that I, that I offer for sale is one of my favorites. All right, now I've got another question. Loved your class. My amaryllis flowered for the second year, but they put out beautiful leaves before the stems. Is that normal? Um, you know, I always say they're girls. They do what they want to do. They will grow leaves before they put out stems, or they'll do it after. But you never, ever want to cut off any leaf that they send out. Um, that's because that's how it replenishes the bulb, so it gets bigger and bigger year after year. I kind of like it when they actually do leaves um, while they're doing the flowers. So that's like, this one is doing, and this is a second year, this big girl. And this is Double King, also one of my very favorites, but it's sending up leaves too. But I think that leaves add a lot of interest to it. So let's see. Everyone watching will see it on the screen. Okay, so you guys can see my questions uh, or see the questions that I am getting. Um, okay, with that question, hit the X and it closes. Well, yeah, there's more questions. Okay, have I ever forced gladiolus bulbs? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. I, um, I force uh, hardy spring bulbs. And then I also force um, the amaryllis and paper whites. And by hardy spring bulbs, I, I mean the daffodils, the tulips, the hyacinths, and the grape hyacinths are more, normally the ones that I do. Fields of Grace Flower Farm. How do you keep them from falling over? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, um, they will stretch to the light. And I assume that you're talking about uh, amaryllis, like these big guys over here. Um, I like to have them a little bit shorter. So what I do is I grow them under light and I keep the conditions pretty cool. 
And so if it's cool, they're not gonna shoot up and get great big and tall. If it's warmer, they will tend to be taller. So how do I keep them from falling over? You can, um, I really don't keep them from falling over because if they happen to, then I cut it off right at the base of, right above the base of the bulb, and I put it in a vase with magnolia branches and things like that. I really, really like how that looks. Let's see. Hi, everybody. Alrighty, so I don't think I have any more questions yet. So just let me know if there's anything you'd like. And um, I'll tell you what, I get great big bulbs, like I mentioned. They're 36, 38 centimeters, and only 2% of all the amaryllis in the world are going to be that size, which makes me even want them even more. But when you get great big bulbs, you will get bigger blooms, you're going to get more blooms, and so it's just a lot better in the long run. Oops, here's two more questions. Wait, I missed something there. Let me get there. Questions. Okay, do I force in water or soil? I start everything in soil. Um, and the reason I do that is because I can control when I want to take it out of the container I'm forcing it in and pot it up into a bulb garden. So, I hope that makes sense. So, paper whites and spring bulbs always, always get planted in soil in these super jumbo deep six packs. And the reason I am very particular about these is because you're gonna need lots of room for the roots. And I'll show you a little bit more about that. And then the amaryllis that I start, and these are the Peruvian ones that are really itching to start growing, I pot them up into these six inch plastic uh, pots. I get them from Greenhouse Megastore. You don't have to be a commercial grower to get them there. You can get, you know, 10 at a time or else you can buy them by the case, which of course I do. Because I force, I mean, I have about 1,200 um, amaryllis, which I just ordered. So if you're a commercial grower, get your order in now. Um, if you are a home gardener, you have a lot more time. Okay, so um, if you force amaryllis or paper whites in water, it's gonna completely de deplete the bulb. And so in amaryllis case, then you're not gonna be able to save the bulb to rebloom next year. You're just gonna toss it away. These are bulbs that were, that are two or three years old and you can see they are still great big. Now, um, are some varieties shorter than others? I think that some of them are shorter than others. I like the Nymph series of Amaryllis because I believe that they are shorter. Um, some of them, one year will be shorter and the next year they'll be taller. So uh, the main thing is to, while you're forcing them, keep them under lights. So we do them in our basement under uh, just fluorescent lights and I keep the lights glow on them and um, that tends to keep them shorter as well. Now, I also mentioned the spring bulbs. And so, these are some of the spring bulbs that I force. I love fragrance. This is a uh, Narcissus or Daffodil that's called Geranium. And again, I force them in these deep six packs. And here's the reason why. Let me pull this out. It's because you can pull them out, Oops. look at this, and you can pot them up into any container that you want. You can choose the stage of bud or bloom that they're in, and you can choose which ones to use. And I love to pot them up into really cool containers, like these concrete urns. I also use, I use a lot of white. I think this is very, very modern. And then some of my workhorses are this white one. And if you're a commercial grower, um, I get all these from Accent Decor. And I love this metal urn, the Fable metal urn. I use a lot of them. And I also ship uh, paper whites um, that are dormant, ready to start growing in this container. Now, let's see if there are more. Oh, okay. Uh, do you force hyacinths in soil or water? I force hyacinths 
100% of the time in soil. I 100% force them in the six packs. And um, I, I pot them up in November, right after our, um, we have a flowers, a winter flower school here at the farm. Um, that is everything about forcing bulbs. And as soon as we're done with that, we start potting these up. And I get about 6,000 spring bulbs. And I love doing hyacinths this way. Now, some people like hyacinths in forcing vases, which is really beautiful. But you can still grow hyacinths, you know, in the six packs and then just wash off all the soil and put them right there in the vase for anybody that wants those. Um... Let's see. Oh, here's some more. How do you plan the days out for forcing? For example, planning for blooms for an Easter or Mother's Day planter for the table. That's a very good question. I plant, we pot up all of our spring bulbs in November. And um, they stay in the cooler. At first, I keep them at like 45 to mimic fall. And then they go down to 39 or 40 to mimic winter growing conditions. So our we do workshops starting in February. And so I'll bring out the first round of bulbs like these. These have not been out of the cooler yet, so they're, they're gonna come out kind of pale green. And within a week, they look like this. So don't worry about that. And then I'll keep them here in the cool greenhouse as they green up and they start to bud get great big buds and then I put them back in the cooler and that's how I plan for Easter or um, for our workshops. I don't think a Mother's Day planter is um, really going to be pushing it. So you could give that a try but you would need to put all your bulbs in the cooler for and leave them there for at least like three or four months and then I would bring them out, let them green up, bud up, put them back in the cooler and you can hold them there for weeks. What do I add to my water to prolong flowers and how long do they last in water after cut? I, I am a post-harvest fan and so I always add um, a post-harvest solution like, you know, Florida Life to, the, to a base, um, except I have learned that like tulips, um, because I've been, I've been trialing the winter grown indoor tulips, which will have been fabulous and they don't need any post harvest solution at all. Um, they just go into regular water. So I add floor life to prolong flowers and how long do they last in the water after cut? Amaryllis, when they're cut, last just as long in a vase as they do on the bulb. So these will last well, this one's been here for uh, over a week, probably more like 10 days. So they'll last a very long time, but just keep them out of the sun. Do I order pre-chilled bulbs for my workshops for spring forcing? I love what you do with spring bulbs. Oh, thank you so much, Kansas Girl Flowers. Um, I, I do not order pre-chilled bulbs for my workshops for spring forcing. That's because I'm giving them the appropriate amount of chilling period so that I can bring them out and use them in the workshops. And like I said, our workshops start in, in February. So um, one of the secrets, and I'm going to hold something up here. These are, this is what I put together and it shows all of the spring bulbs that we did this year. And so here's the hyacinths. I hope you can see it because I can only see the questions. And here's the grape hyacinths. Look, I've got three different varieties of white grape hyacinths because I love them so much. Um, but uh, this is how I choose bulbs to use in you know, our workshops and to use in our tabletop bulb gardens. I pick bulbs that would naturally be blooming in April, mid-April, or April into May. And that's because they need about the same amount of chilling time. So I don't want to get like something like a crocus that needs, you know, they're always the first things to bloom outside. And so I wouldn't want to try forcing crocuses to go with some of the tulips or some of the things that would be blooming in May 
because they wouldn't need the same amount of chilling time, if that makes sense. So I select things that are early, that bloom in April and mid-April and into April and May. I do have one sailboat, one Narcissus that is actually a May bloomer, but I have found that it, it forces in about the same amount of time as all of my other ones. Let's see. These, how do I plan the days out? Pre-chilled bulbs. I did order pre-chilled bulbs on the, um, for the forced cutting tulips. And I got the 5C bulbs from the tulip workshop. If you've taken their workshop, you can get their bulbs. And they were, they had already been through their chilling time. So I only needed to put them in the cooler for three weeks to get them rooted. And then they went into our scary old house basement at 64 degrees. Start blooming. Um... Okay, let me see. Oh, there's some more. Um, let me see if there's another question. I was given some, oh, wait a minute, no. This is from Heartbreak Flower Farm. Took your class and loved it, thank you. When you take out your spring bulbs to green up, what is the ideal temperature and light conditions for them? Excellent question. And um, think about what they would be experiencing as they started coming up in the spring. Cool temperatures, and they would really like some bright light. And so this is my 20 by 20 old glass and aluminum greenhouse, which is where I bring them into. I like them to be cool. And so cool with lots of bright light. So I bring them in here and I keep the temperature low. We have, we, we're heated by propane but I'll let it go down to uh, 40. And so, so I don't want them being too warm too soon because if it's warm, they will shoot up and you'll have some spindly um, stems and they won't, you know, they'll, they, they won't be as good as you want them to be. Uh, so the ideal temperature is cool spring temperatures. Just think of it that way. So let it go down to 40 at night and then during the day, I don't want it over 70 in here. If it is, it's, you know, I've got fans, which I have turned off now, but to try to keep them cooler. So, cool, bright light. And this one, uh, question, I was given some chilled tulips. I'd like to force them. Should I pre-chill? It sounds like they have already been chilled. Um, and by chilled tulips, you might have gotten some that are called 5C which 5C is five degrees centigrade equals 41 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what they have been chilled at to go through their entire chilling cycle, which is like 14, 17 weeks. Um, if you'd like to force them, here's what, you, what I recommend that you do. Pot them up into crates. You can do it in, in bulb crates with uh, a little bit of soil on the bottom because they're not gonna form a whole lot of roots and then uh, cover up those tulip bulbs, put them where it's, it's cool and you can root them. And the reason you want to root them is because uh, good roots will help the, the tulip uptake uh, water and nutrients and you're going to have a better flower. So if yours have already gone through all of their chilling, I would still pop them up, let them send down roots for a good two to three weeks. And let me see here. until you guys have more questions. And so, like I said, I have just ordered my amaryllis. And again, I keep them. This is how I organize stuff. This is how many I've ordered, what I get. Um, I get Dutch amaryllis, and I also get Peruvian amaryllis. And the difference is that Peruvian are Southern Hemisphere amaryllis. And so, in the Southern Hemisphere, when it's winter here, it's summer there. Um, and this is why this is important. An amaryllis left on its own devices, growing where it would be uh, perennial, which would be someplace that's very warm, like Florida or Texas, um, would be growing, would be blooming in the summertime. 
And so the Peruvian amaryllis that I get in um, uh, that I get in October already think that it's summer. So they are very, very easy to get the bloom for your holiday blooms. And so as soon as I get in those Peruvian amaryllis, I pot them up into this six inch pot. And by getting the great big bulbs, it's gonna, you know, they, they fill up a big chunk of this pot. You only plant half of the bulb into the soil. See like this one, let me get it in the light there so you can kind of see it. They always want at least half of their um, bulb out of the soil. I don't know why, but they do. Um, and I can put these under some warmth, meaning about 70 degrees and under lights, and I can get them in great big bud for the holidays. And I like them to be in big bud, then I put them in the cooler to hold them, and then I pull them out of these pots and I create great big bulb gardens. I don't have all of them. But like in this container, I would put three bulbs in here and, um, and then I always surround it with moss too. So Peruvian bulbs are the ones that you can force for the holidays. Now the reason I get Dutch amaryllis is because Holland, you know, is Northern Hemisphere. They're in the same, uh, you know, when it's winter in the US, it's gonna be winter in Holland too. So those bulbs are gonna take a lot longer to force into bloom. But I use those as, um, I put them into forcing kits, which we create out of um, um, clay rose pot, six and a half inches. And then I put a coffee filter in the bottom of that pot that's about eight inches tall. Coffee filter, totally dry Promix. And I use Promix for my for everything, everything. Put totally dry potting soil in there. Put the dormant bulb in there. And then I surround it with um, Spanish moss. And then I take the clay saucer and put that over the top of it. So, and then I put rubber bands on it and then satin ribbons and I wrap that up. And that is the perfect Christmas gift for anybody that loves, that loves amaryllis. Um, I use the totally dry soil because it will keep that bulb dormant because you don't want it growing when that saucer lid is still on it. So that's one, of, and I also um, do shippable bulb gardens where I've got a birch bowl so it doesn't break in shipping, totally dry promix, three dormant bulbs in there, and then I surround them with reindeer moss. It's so pretty. And then we ship those all over the place. Here's another question. Sunflower Sky Farm. Hi Val. How long can you keep them in the cooler with a big bud to hold them until potting them up? Now I'm thinking that you are probably talking about amaryllis. So amaryllis don't like cold. They don't want to sit in that cooler at um, 45. Um, but what it does is it puts them into like suspended am animation. And so I will keep them in the cooler for two to three weeks if I need to. And that is no problem whatsoever. They will not keep growing in there. They're just going to sit there. And so that's um, the stage I like to put them in the cooler is the stage that I want to hold them at. Then when I bring them out of the cooler and pop them up into all of these glorious bulb gardens, they are totally happy to just let the show go on. But they don't overreact to coming out of the cool into warmth. They don't suddenly shoot up. It's like they just woke up from their little nap and then they just continue to continue to keep growing. Um, if you wanted to see what some of these bulb gardens look like, please take a look at uh, my Instagram because you'll see them all over it. And it's Val Shermer or Three Toads Farm. And I also um, uh, post on Facebook under Valerie Shermer, and then we also have Three Toads Farm. If you wanna take a look at um, the amaryllis, everything that we sold this past year, uh, just go to our online shop, which is Three Toads Farm dash shop. And they're all sold out, but you'd be able to see what I offered and you know how much, you know what I'm getting for them. 
if you are a commercial grower and you want to do this too, I would say in order to get the premium prices for your products, you're gonna need premium bulbs. So don't get something that's gonna be 28, 30 centimeters. If you do, you're gonna have to put in uh, Can you hear me now? Tell me if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Hmm. What happened? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yay, okay. Sorry about that. Um, great, perfect. Okay, um, let me get rid of that part. Uh, here's another question. And audio not working. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm glad I can see your, your comments there. Um, now, on what colors to get for the, um, the, the uh, Peruvian emeralds, the ones that you want in bloom, uh, get, I get the amaryllis that are holiday colors. Wait, these are done, sorry. Um, because people, people really like the reds. They like the whites. They like bright. You know, they like the typical kind of holiday colors. So these are the ones that I've ordered so far for this year. And the ones I'm not ordering. And then I've still got part of my order I still am going to place. But I like double amaryllis. I know you lost last five minutes. I'm sorry. I like double amaryllis. And if I get a single amaryllis, it's got to be something really spectacular. Um, but I, so I tend to get red ones. I get deep red ones. I also get some fuchsia ones and which is a bolero, which is beautiful. And then I also get red and white. And then for the Dutch amaryllis, cause a lot of those are going to be blooming after the holidays. I will get ones that are like these beautiful colors like this. Um, and I order my amaryllis through uh, ADR, which is the order I've already placed. And I'm also going back and I'm going to order some through Ball. And I'm doing that because Ball is trying really hard to um, correct some of the earlier issues that they had with amaryllis and get them to everybody on time because I'm very specific about when I wanna get these, but they have more varieties than ADR has. So my Dutch amaryllis, they're gonna to ship to me the week of October 16th. And my uh, Peruvian amaryllis will ship to me the week of October 9th. So, um, okay, well this will also be record, or it's also being recorded and it's gonna be um, on Lisa's website, I mean Instagram site, so you can um, go back and see it uh, then. Um, wait, can you say where you ordered the metal container again? Yes, this one right here. This is the Fable Urn. 
and I get them from Accent Decor. I get all of my containers through Accent Decor. With, so if you're a commercial grower, you can get them from there. If you are a home gardener, I'm sorry, you can't. But um, I would encourage you to go and use some of maybe the old containers that you might have at home, like say old punch bowls, because they are beautiful to pot up all the amaryllis in. And somebody asked me about the wind chime. Uh, did I answer that? Yes, it is a, a big, long wind chime. I've got one in here, and then there's one also outside. I love that. Um, Okay, so we are at one o'clock. Um, it's thank you for your time. I'm sorry about the audio, um, but I hope that you will join me in forcing glorious blooms for the holidays and beyond. I'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Oh, maybe I'll see you in a workshop. Come on to the workshops. You can also go on Three Toads Farm dash shop and sign up for our workshops. Um, so about any recommendations on best books or courses for forcing bulbs? Well, my course is the best. And you can come in person. And we always have a great mix of home gardeners and commercial growers that come to the farm. Because you get to do it all hands-on. You get to choose from all my bulbs. And I show you how to do it. But this is a great book. Right here. Can you see it? This is Smith & Hawkins. It is out of print. And it's called Forcing. But go on and Google it, and you might be able to get an old copy. I just got a copy at one of my favorite antique stores. So it is fabulous. It is awesome. It's easy to understand. It's forcing everything, and it is It's well worth the 20 bucks you'll spend. All righty. I'll see you guys. Bye-bye.